devotions for this, the the last week of Epiphany, and it really isn't a full week because we will be changing to the season of Lent come Wednesday morning with Ash Wednesday celebrations. And so this is a short um, period for us, Monday and Tuesday, as we continue to reflect on the Epiphany. At the beginning of this week, we continue to hold in our hearts the people of our world, remembering especially the people of the Ukraine and the people of Russia, um, sending them light and divine love, as we trust that, as we seek to allow light to shine in the region, that there may be a change of heart and attitudes, and that this era will be rectified and the people of Russia and Ukraine be allowed to live out their lives without this threat of war. But it reminds us all of this world and what we are part of and our responsibility at times where we need to ensure that we are vocal in a sense, but that we are active as we seek to assist others in their journey and to be able to recognize that because something is occurring way across the other side of the world, it doesn't mean that in any way we are excluded from it. And so we've got to be mindful of the importance of recognizing that we play a part in all of this and that we must recognize that they are our brothers and sisters, both sides. And so we need to send them divine light to see how we can in some way impact upon them to change this direction. So we go to our sacred space, our inner world. We choose the place that we need to be at this point in time. And we ask the divine to be here with us to assist us as we go into this time of meditation and prayer. We first of all make sure that we are in a place where we will not be disturbed for a while as we bring ourselves into a state of peace and we open our hearts, bring our attention right into our hearts Taking a deep breath into our heart space and releasing it. Taking a few more deep breaths slowly and with intention, becoming aware. We set our intention to be open and receptive only to those energies and information which is for our highest good and the perfect amounts needed for our healing and evolution at this time. And as we open our hearts, we pray the sacred prayer. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The Spirit of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. In this place of peace, stillness, we become aware of God's presence, God's light. We are reminded that I am an eternal being of light. I am an eternal being of light. I am an eternal being of light. The Master reminds us to let our light shine before others. And today we collect that light and we share it with each other, we build it. As we reach out our arms to 
take the hands of the other, making a deliberate connection with each other. to allow for the intensifying of our light. That we may raise the brightness of our world, of our earth. That the light may shine in those areas where there is darkness and need for light. We send out a healing light. A light of peace and brotherly love, sisterly love. We ask that this light may so spread across our world that others may truly see and as they see they may acknowledge the divine We know God is with us. We know God is here. We give thanks for all that God continues to do in our lives and in our world. And we ask that this day, that this day may be a day filled with renewed awareness of God's presence that we may shed God's love abroad our world allowing persons to come to know God in new ways Pray for renewal. And we pray for healing. As you remember those who are preparing for any surgical procedure at this time. We send light and love. and healing. May the divine watch over all of us and and may this day be a day of true grace and love. Our reading for today comes from John's Gospel, the 18th chapter, reading verse 15 to 18 and 25 to 27. John 18, 15 to 18 and 25 to 27. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to be to the high priest, He went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You're not also one of his disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold 
and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You're not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Here ends the reading. Today we have as our lesson for the morning the experience of Peter which we all know so very well as Peter finds himself confronted by the whole question of are you one of them and Peter struggling um, with it because no doubt there's tremendous amount of fear that he is wrestling with and so he denies he denies he is not ready for it he is not up to this challenge at this point and we all know the story that Peter is seriously distraught at the fact that he was not able to 
confront his own fear and and speak up. And what made it perhaps worse was the fact that he was warned that this was going to happen. And even though he was warned of it, it, it still was a situation where he was unable to do anything about it. And the beautiful thing about the story, because we know the whole story, we have been through it countless times, and we, we know of the restoration of Peter. We know that our Lord Jesus was able to restore Peter because the love of God is the love of God. And it teaches us an important lesson from two sides. There is the side of Peter that recognizes that he was not ready for what was in front of him. He tried, he really tried, but it was too much. And sometimes in our journey, we try, we, we really try, but it can be too much. And that leads us to the second part. And that is that God knows our hearts. And God knows when we have tried. And God looks on as a loving father who sees a child making an effort. In our world where so much emphasis is placed on success, this may be difficult to grasp because it is, it is not about the success. It is about the intention of the heart, it is the desire of the heart to serve, to do the right thing. And we hear this coming through in, in Paul where he speaks about his desire to do the right and still seeing in his body the wrong coming through. And he cries out to God for deliverance. And I believe this is why too Jesus is able to tell his disciples about the importance of forgiveness. Because forgiveness isn't focused on the failure. Forgiveness is focused on the desire to continually uplift the other. To give the other what the other needs in order to be able to grow. And this episode in Jesus' life teaches us a great deal about God's love. We know that when Jesus was about to leave the earth, in the same Gospel of John, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? He said so three times and Peter answered. Three times, just as oft as he had denied, Jesus offers him an assurance of forgiveness. Jesus offers us an assurance of forgiveness. But like everything else, what we receive, we must also give. So the assurance of forgiveness from God is also an invitation to forgive others, to love. In a few days, we're going to be going into the season of Lent. And Lent is seen as a time of fasting and prayer, etc. But Lent is the season of love. Lent is a season when we strip everything away from ourselves. And hopefully, somewhere deep within ourselves, without all our egoic issues, without all our pretenses, Without all the glamour, somewhere deep within, we find the core. And the core is love. So as we move closer to this season this year, remember that all of our fasting, all of our self-denial, is not about punishment, it's not about 
going through austerities for the sake of austerities. It's about claiming love. Remembering the love that we are and letting that love be the driving force in our lives. That's what Peter's experience tells us about. The focus is not on the cock crowing, the focus is not on the denial. The focus is on the love of God, that in the midst of our brokenness, just like a mother whose little baby has just had a bowel movement, pulls it to her, hugs it, and says to it, aren't you sweet? Aren't you so sweet? The love is what is important in the moment. That the child needs to know that at every stage, in every condition that it finds itself, the mother's love is a certainty. There must be no doubt. No second guessing. If we can do this for our children, and we are mortal and weak, what about God? Can't God do the same? That in the midst of our messiness, God pulls us to himself and says to us, aren't you sweet? Aren't you lovable? Aren't you beautiful? I love you. So we must come to a place where we can accept that. Because if we can accept it for ourselves and we can know what it feels like, then we can give it to someone else. And we know that there are many in our world who truly need to feel that sense of forgiveness. Some of whom we ourselves might have been withholding it. Because we ourselves don't understand the gift of forgiveness. We might have even held it over their heads. But we don't have that power actually. We only think we do. In fact, the withholding of forgiveness does nothing to the other, but it does a whole lot to ourselves. So let's not go that road. Let's instead offer the forgiveness, but first receive the forgiveness and trust the forgiveness. And allow ourselves to experience the forgiveness and the love which is derived from that sense of forgiveness. It is the love that is at the core, at the basis. It's the love that feeds the forgiveness and the forgiveness demonstrates the love. Jesus loved Peter and he loved him through it all. Jesus loves you, and he loves you through it all. Jesus loves me, and he loves me through it all. And so too must I love you, and you must love others. Because we know what it is to be loved by God and that is the greatest thing in the world.